All right, we are live. Hello, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. I see we got a few people in the live chat uh, pumped to get started here. So welcome to the show, everybody. My name is Chris Callie. Today, we are doing a live debate. It's the first time I'm ever doing something like this. Who knows what's going to happen? It's going to be a little bit wild. Everybody's already fighting in the lobby. I had to break them up already. It's going to get a little intense. I'm just kidding. Everybody's super nice. We're all friends here. But when it comes to pickleball, we take this stuff seriously. So it might get a little heated. But anyways, guys, real quick, if you guys would not mind, go ahead and give that little thumbs up button. Go ahead and give that little like button a click. That always helps the show out, spreads the word out to people that might not know about this. So if you could do that, go ahead. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel in case you're not already subscribed. Hit the notification bell if you do that type of thing. You know, that way you know when stuff like this pops up in case you didn't know. Uh, definitely leave us a comment. We got the live chat. We got the live chat going. So uh, send us a comment if you want to. Get in on the debate a little bit. Talk smack. Maybe ask a question. Feel free to do that. If you're watching later on, definitely leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think about all these different topics. I got like 15 topics here. We're going to go through like a ton of stuff. We've got a lot to talk about. We're going to try to fit it all in one hour. So it might go a little bit fast. We're going to do around the horn style. Uh, but guys, without further ado, uh, let the show begin. This is the new and improved forgiveness. Forgiveness is more than saying sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, forgiveness. I'm not sorry I took the money. <laughs> All right. Enough of that. Let's bring our guests on, shall we? Let's introduce everybody. Come on up to the stage. All right, let's get everybody in there. Hello, everybody. Thank you guys for joining me. This is going to be a ton of fun. Let's go around the room and let's just introduce ourselves because, I don't know, maybe everybody doesn't know who we're talking to right now. So, uh, Jane, we'll start with you. Hello, Jane. Who are you? Hi. Um, I'm Jane. I run an Instagram account called Obsessed with Pickleball, so go follow me. Um, I just like watching pickleball and talking about pickleball. It's yeah. pretty much that simple. There you go. I love your channel. Everybody go follow her on Instagram. She does recaps after every tournament. It's really good. It's all done in like less than two minutes too. So if you need a quick little fixer upper, quick little boost and see what's going on, she's got good insight. So check that out. Ben, how about you, buddy? Yeah. Hey everybody. I'm Ben and <clears throat> started a Real Clear Stats business uh, back at MLP Columbus. Actually, we did 61 games live in real time with, uh, at the time, 85 unique individual data points on all four players. Um, and uh, we've expanded that, and we're we're actually serving a lot of MLP teams with draft data and players with uh, strategic insights. Um, but ultimately, our goal we we love pickleball. We believe that the sport can be elevated with data and taken more seriously. I think that people don't really appreciate the chess that's happening on the court. And I think data is an important key to unlock that and really drive viewership. So that's what we really believe. And that's what, that's what I'd like to see happen. Ben's got the numbers. He's the numbers guy. He's the only one in pickleball right now coming up with stats, like every sport for all time. Not the only one, moment, but <laughs> <laughs> the, the top one, like, let's be real. Thanks. You know well, what I mean? We're People trying. are like, Oh, you know, I got a few numbers here that you got all the numbers, dude. So I, I love what you're doing, man. Good stuff. Glad to have you here. And last but not least, Jim, I don't know if too many people know who you are. I don't know. You seem like you're not too controversial. Who, who are you? <laughs> oh, I'm the smartest man in pickleball. Just look at my Twitter <laughs> handle and you can see that. There you go. That's a good but way to put it. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Helping out pros with uh, advice, coaching, contracts, doing columns on pickleball.com. Go to pickleball.com. Check it out. A lot of good information on there. Um, you know, might get on Facebook once in a while. Put something up there. There you go. Yeah, Jim's got a, a pickleball blog that is all the rage. Some people love it. Some people are, you know, they, they want to they wanna talk back and give their opinion. But hey, that's why we got him here, because uh, he's a man who loves to have an opinion. And so does Jane and so does Ben. So it's going to be a fun time. So anyways, let's go ahead and get into this. First question I got for you guys, because we all know that the MLP draft just happened. We all watched it. It was interesting results. But first, let's actually talk about the draft itself. So what do we think about the draft style? Yay or nay? And any suggestions? Uh, 
Jim, we'll start with you. What do you think? Did you like this draft style with the the bidding and all that? I did, but uh, I thought the deficiency was that they didn't give us enough, enough information. We weren't really in the draft room. Mm-hmm. Like I was keeping track of the of the of the uh, prices on players, and right off the bat, we got to JW there at about the twelfth uh, pick, and nobody told us how much he went for. So boom, there goes all my all my math <laughs> on how much they have left, how much they budget. But I thought the auction was really cool. I think they're making a mistake actually to go to keepers because I think if they do it right, they could mimic the NFL draft. You know, the NFL draft is the second most watched sport on TV after the Super Bowl, and uh, I think they could blow up that draft and make it huge. But if you have uh, half the players now as a keeper, you know, you're kind of killing the killing the draft. Fair enough. Ben, what do you think? Do you agree? Disagree? I disagree a little bit. Well, I'm going to come out firing here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, let's go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I really liked the style of the draft. I think it was uh, clever and it created a lot of drama behind the scenes. It was super exciting and not a dull moment the entire four hours that um, – I, we were drafting. I was helping the ranchers at the time. We've helped other, we served other teams with stats as well, but I was helping out in real time with the ranchers. Um, I think it's obviously a huge missed opportunity in the broadcast to really, to, I mean, yeah. if they were showing the live bids that was happening, the stuff we were seeing, I mean, it was riveting stuff to see who was bidding, how much they were bidding. And also the, the if they had even cameras in some of the draft rooms somehow, it could have been awesome because a couple of times, like, Someone stole our bid, and we're like, "Oh my gosh, are they going to take Etta? I hope they don't take Etta. Oh my gosh, they took Thomas Wilson! I can't believe it!" <laughs> you know, we're so you know, there are so many exciting moments um, because of that, and I I think obviously it was it was a kind of rushed because of the the merge taking 15 months. Yeah. Um, so I understand it, but it it is kind of a huge opportunity. I think where I'm disagreeing is we will still have some drafts happening. I think at least 18 of the players will be dropped before 25, four new teams will come up and all the teams will kind of be drafting in some form uh, in 25. Of course, everything's subject to change, but um, I think there still will be some excitement. I don't know if it'll be as as exciting as this this was. Sure, sure. Actually, uh, while we're on the subject of cameras in the room, Matty Pickles did score a little bit of footage of one of the picks for the Texas Ranchers. It was really cool to see that. And you just go, wow, like, I wish I could have watched it like this the entire time. You know, imagine teams were like live streaming, like their draft room. You could kind of pick one you want to go in. That would have been so awesome. But anyways, Jane, what do you think? Anything to add to that? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. I really liked it. I would have loved to see the teams bidding against each other. Yeah, but I thought I liked it. I mean, obviously, it's the first time that it was done. I think it would have probably been a mistake to jump right in and do that much more broadcasting because Mm. it could have really not gone well. I think it's kind (laughs) of like a safe choice. Like we'll do it very or like in an organized way, just in case things go badly. And then now that they know it works, the next time they can do it well. But I like it more than the snake draft. I was into it. Fair. Yeah. I think that's really what it comes down to is like, and it just seems like the snake draft wouldn't have been fair with the way the last, you know, half of the season went for MLP, the way they planned on doing it. Maybe it could have ended up fair, but yeah, it does seem like a good way to do it. All right, cool. So for the most part in all in agreement there. Um, now let's, let me ask you guys this about the draft. This is kind of a, a point that a lot of people have been making. Jimmy uh, Miller made a tweet about this. I do think it's an interesting point. What do you guys think about the first pick of the team becoming the GM. Is that something that you guys agree with? Is that something you feel like is more situational? Like if they need it yet, or do you feel like it's just a bad look all around and they shouldn't be doing that? Uh, Ben, we'll start with you this time. Oh, you're muted. (laughs) Classic, right? Sorry. Um, uh, I don't think it's necessarily a bad look, but I do think it's mostly bad for teams. Um, I understand kind of, why that happens. I think pickleball players eat, sleep and breathe pickleball, you know, but, but they're human and they have hugely biased uh, opinions due to their personal relationships, both good and bad with everyone on tour. I think their input is really important, but like as GMs become more knowledgeable and data driven players will need to become more professional and trust the analytics and franchise priorities above their personal opinions and behave more like professionals. I don't think we're quite there yet in the sport. I think maybe some of the teams are, but some aren't. But for the most part, I think the players don't haven't yet. Maybe the the teams and franchises haven't yet earned the trust of of players to to make that happen, um, yeah. and so they don't really fully trust the GMs quite yet. I think it. I think ultimately, though, that it would be good if that changed. 
Yeah. Jane, what do you think? Same thing or different? You feel no, like it's I cool? Think, I think adding another perspective that's not the players, because the players are obviously going to have a bias. Yeah. Um, going in, I mean, they have relationships with each other. They've played with each other. They want to do what's best for them as much as what's best for the team. So it doesn't really make sense for them to be the GMs. I mean, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we all know that the Utah Black Diamonds didn't have their players consulting with each other. Tyson McGuffin and Tyler Lung. <laughs> I don't think either one of them was like, yeah, pick him. Uh, are, so are we talking about is. like drafting the teams or like going on to be GMs? Oh, I just right? meant drafting the team. Yeah, I guess that's how I'm using so the term GM. I think there needs to be definitely another person in the room, but I agree that nobody knows truly the dynamics as much as the players right and sure. it's kind of like both sides like you don't want the players to be making the decisions that are best for them and not best for the team but they also probably are like these two people should not play together or mm -hmm. you know i i know the, this person's training style i know them personally so you know i think it's okay for the first pick to be very involved in choosing sure. the team but there should probably be another voice in the room that can keep them honest yeah. So Jim, if you had to give like a percentage of like how much they should get involved, I should have asked Ben this question, but I'm going to ask you, Jim, give us a number. What do you think the percentage of involvement that a first, we'll say premier league, mm -hmm. uh, what do you think that the, the percentage should have been for that first round pick? Uh, well, if I had to put a percentage on, it, I'd say something like 30, 35%, something okay. like that. I, they're the players are the teenagers. I'm the parent. We're deciding where to go on vacation. We're deciding where to go out to eat. I'll listen to you. I want you to <laughs> yeah. Your, I want your opinion, but yeah. I'm making the final decision. I do think players, it depends on the player. You know, some players are more analytical than others. Some players are more emotional than others. Some players, to be frank, are not that are not all that smart about their game and um the strategy of the game. Um and so we had that with the team we were drafting Chandler. We we listened to people um and uh, we sought input from different players, but um we're making the final decision and I would do that. Yeah. Um, I would say that if, if I pick Ben Johns, I'd say, Ben, I, I really want your input. I really want to listen to you. I'm sure. not saying ignore him. Definitely not. I want to hear, I'm thinking of picking this person. What do you think? How do you get along with them? All that stuff's important, but um, getting down to it, um, I'm seeing things that they don't see, the importance of a lefty. I mean, we saw that with our team. We took Zoe, Zoe Wong in the first round. She's a, she's a left side player. The rest of the players don't recognize that. We had to get a lefty. I mean, the lefty yeah. was really important to our team, in our opinion. I don't think most of the players would have would have seen that. Yeah, I would imagine mm -hmm. that they're basing it mostly off of personality. Jane, you have something to add to that? I'm giving Ben 90%. <laughs> uh, fair, fair. I yeah, mean, he yeah. has proven every single time that he knows what he's doing. And maybe he doesn't know for event one, but he always knows. Mm. Yeah. I mean, do you, I'm, do I'm giving know? Anna Bright a lot of space to decide. Um, even I after think, picking if Kate you can Fade, trust you know? that you're the person you're talking to wants to win and they're smart, I'm giving them a lot of say. Yeah. I think thinking that you know better might be a little crazy. Better than Ben? No, I don't think so. Well, you, why do you think that Ben is so great at picking a team? I I, I posted on that last year. I said he, Ben he, Ben was a good he's player, won but so many times. That is not that is not a statement of how how well somebody did though, because it's in comparison to what it's. Could you have had a better team? Just take his team last year with Chicago Slice. I could have picked a better team. I think they would have had a better result. It doesn't mean that they didn't have a good result, but the, could they have had a better result? That's that's what matters. Well, of course they could have had a better result. It was also the snake draft. So it's a little bit different. And sure. of course, they could have had a better result, but they could have. Would they have? We don't know. I'm just sure. trusting Ben. I, I think I, I, I don't know if I disagree with both of you or agree with both of you. Just real quick to add, <laughs> the reason I think I give him 90% is he's already said that MLP isn't his favorite thing. If I have Ben, I want him going to going to battle with the team that he picks that he's going to shoulder the carry the, the responsibility for because I need to get the best out of Ben. So that's my reason. I don't I agree with Jim in a way. I don't necessarily think Ben's made the best decisions. Ben's even criticized his own decisions. Um, so I think that's why you give him ninety percent. Well, I guess so, Jane. If if you're saying you give Ben a big chunk of the decision making there, and a bright, you give a big chunk of the decision making there. 
where kind of like on the list of who was drafted do you say eh, i'm cutting it off at like you know <laughs> at andre diascu i'm cutting it off Who's at like not getting <laughs> you know, you're like eh, you know what uh, like you know, i ain't right. just you no. Sam Query does not get does Sam Query gets five percent. Uh, <laughs> Sam Query, I'm drafting Sam you Curry first, and drafted. you get to pick the whole team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's already been drafted first. I mean, it's true. I don't think I'm giving James a lot. I'm just gonna say. That. Well, would you give Anna Lee Waters that authority? Lee I don't think I would give her ninety. <laughs> yeah. Fair. It probably drops off a little bit. I don't think. I haven't seen an MLP her be the kind of leader that mm. other people have been. Yeah. And she's young and mm. she has a lot of people in her ear. So I don't know. I would yeah. consult heavily with her, but not as much as Ben and Anna. It would end up being Lee anyways. You know, it would be Lee being like, tell them to pick. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> I also. Person. Yeah, I don't know. Not as, much, not as much. Not as much as not as much as Ben and Anna. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Well, let's actually talk about the draft results a little bit. Uh, what do you guys think? I want you, I want to go around. I want to get who do you guys think were like the top three teams? Maybe not necessarily in any particular order. If you do have the order, cool. Um, but like, who do you think would like nail the draft and has assembled the best team? Uh, Jane, we can start with you. A anybody uh, come to mind when you think of like the top three premier teams? I love the ranchers. Yes. I'm it really into um, Dallas. I think that they did really My well. Favorite. And then um, I'm like very like high ceiling, low floor on um, the hustlers in the shop. Can't decide. Oh, okay. I think stuck on both those teams could be so good, but <laughs> it's, they're both a little, iffy maybe just missing a piece okay we'll see yeah. i mean we don't know yeah jim any thoughts on that do you agree with any of those choices there do you have your own thoughts on the top three team um i'm more just looking at my list i'm more about um i think it's really even i think it's a mishmash i think a lot of teams have questions um i think there's a lot of teams that have like two really good picks and a bad <laughs> pick or two two good picks an okay pick and then a real speculative pick not saying it's necessarily a bad pick but a real speculative pick if you take like uh, like columbus you know riley newman megan design connor garnett solid 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 brooke mm -hmm. buckner not sure on that one uh yeah. not sure on that one uh we've talked about st louis with starting off with anna go patrick Wynn and tardio obviously picks kind of with a with a future in mind even though tardio's only got a one-year contract then they go kate fahey um, I think I'm one of the few that, that watched a bunch of film on Kate Fahey before the draft. And we had her on our list. We actually had her targeted at, at hoping to get her in like the second round of challenger. And boy, were we surprised when she got picked, um, premier. She's mm -hmm. doesn't have a lot of power, uh, tennis player, you know, up and coming real speculative on where she's going to be in six months. Uh, people saying, is she the next Rachel Rohrbacher? I don't see that. She just doesn't doesn't strike me as having the power that Rachel does. So I don't quite see the fit with Anna Bright, but that'd be the one where Anna Bright would be telling me it's a great fit with her. And I'd be saying why I'm, I don't think it's a great fit with her. Um, you know, the Dallas team, I, I always like, I always like a JW team and then they never seem to perform. Um, everybody's, everybody's down on JW as a leader and sort of lack of emotion and so on. And they went out and did one thing that I had recommended going to the draft is get either Dylan or Georgia and get somebody that you think can uh, encourage him and be positive and get him going. Mm -hmm. um, JW's played at my house. He's got more, there's more there to him than people give him credit for, but we don't really see it on the, on, on TV. Um, I did really like that. They went Tyra and then they went Augie. Tyra has got to play left side. So that was a team. Oh. I don't, I don't know if they did it. I don't know who's running Dallas, but uh, hopefully they knew you got to get Tyra a lefty. Um, uh, so I think, I think that was an is interesting choice. Should they have gone tell us instead of her? Um, Tyra but and Augie had a really good tournament together. Yeah, yeah. I think that was. Yeah. I yeah, think no, they're they're it. yeah. And, and Tejas, Tejas went with Edda. Tejas and Edda had, uh, two match points against, 
uh, ALW and Ben here in, in uh, at Desert Ridge. So I thought that was a that was a smart pick. So I, I, I like a lot about my my question on Texas is, you know, a lot of people have said it is all Sean a lead dog. Um, and, and I guess and I guess we'll see. So so to me, there's a lot of teams. There's probably like, uh, you know, we haven't talked about Ben's team. Ben's team, you know, came along as pretty solid. He did he did one of the strategies that that I had written on about taking taking Colin. A lot of people say no, don't take Colin. Oh. And you know, taking Colin, you, your 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 mentality has to be we're going to win every men's doubles. That's yeah. one point. We're going to win 80, 90 percent of Ben's mix. That's two points. That gets us at least to Dream Breaker. And under the current mm -hmm. scoring format, you get one point even if you lose in the Dream Breaker, uh, which is really important. So, um, so I didn't have a problem with the with the Colin pick, but uh, um, I thought they 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 obviously they quit spending money. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure on the dynamic of why some teams quit spending money. I mean, obviously other than Utah, um, but they quit with over a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> they could have had um, you know more of an improvement there at the uh, uh, number one woman spot. That would be the area where I'd question Seattle. So I see a lot of questions on about. Uh, eight nine so no cre no clear top three for you quite yet no i mean if I, i'm i'm gonna be doing my uh, post on on predictions for the for the mlp before it starts but i'm really really up in the air you got will howells kate fahey i mean this last round caitlin christian i love caitlin christian for potential but is she ready for prime time yeah um so there's i think there's a lot of teams with a lot of questions all right, cool. Well, Ben, what do you think? He's been patiently waiting. He's like, I got my three ready. <laughs> what do you think, Ben? Uh, I just want to make sure we still have time. Is there time? Um, <laughs> oh, shots fired. <laughs> um, uh, well, I'm glad. It's nice of you, Jim, to give participation trophies to everybody. I think they'll really appreciate that. <laughs> I'm going to pick. I have, I've got two ways I'm thinking about about identifying the top team. Who's the, who's the top team in 2024? The top three in 2024. Uh, so for 2024, I think... You have to look at the, the teams that are ready to go right now and go compete and be competitive. I think Seattle Pioneers, you can't look past Ben playing with Jesse again. They hardly lost the mix, except they lost to, I think, Zane and Rachel in second season last year. You got Ben, Andrea, Jesse, Colin. Um, we can talk. I can. I have some thoughts about Colin. We can talk later. Mm -hmm. Next, I've got Columbus Sliders, Riley Newman, Megan, Connor, and Brooke. I'm, I feel good. Oh, there's Jim Kloss's cat. I love your Twitter <laughs> account. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I think Brooke <laughs> is, yeah. is poised to, to take a big step in this coming the, the rest of the year. So I think that was a smart pick. I think they're a dangerous team. Yeah. And also the Orlando squeeze, Federico, Vivian, David, mm -hmm. Paris, Todd, Jay DeVillier. I think they can be sneaky good and they're good right now. They've got maybe their women are questionable in women's, but other than that, they're going to be deadly and mixed and they're going to be form They're going to be hold their own in, in, uh, and uh, men's too, I think. Um, the other way I was looking at it was, what about for three years? I mean, we're drafting not just for one right. year, we're drafting for three years. So at three years, I'm looking at your top two picks. Those are the players you can, you're most likely going to want to retain over yeah. the course of three years. So I've got St. Louis Shock, you got Anna Bright, Hayden Patrick Green, Gabe Tardio, Kate Faye. I mean, can we, spot. dare we doubt Anna Bright? I think that they could be a dangerous team. Um, of course, Kate is, is probably they're going to have to drop her, but if Hayden or Gabe underperform, they could drop them after after uh, after 24 and save some money. Um, the DC pickleball team, James Ignato with Rachel Rohrbacher, I think that they're they're still very much on the ascendancy. Deca Barr and Elise are also very steady partners uh, uh, to round out the team for for this year and maybe for next year, one of them. And then lastly, I mean the the Texas Ranchers, I really feel like christian and etta if you're looking at three years that's the best first two picks of the draft yeah. um and you know i think tina pisnik and pablo whichever one of them plays best they can probably retain also for 25 and i think mm -hmm. they like all the teams have to drop one so i have kind of two different lenses and i kind of get two different lists of teams you know based on if we're looking at three years or just just 24. yeah Solid insight. There you go. Love it. All right. Well, let's have some fun with this now. What do we think is the, I, we all might agree on this one, but just in case we don't, what do we think is the bottom tier team? Like, what do we think is the worst <laughs> premier team right now? Ben is eager. Go ahead, Ben. Let it fly. Uh, I think, isn't this sign language for you? I'm saying Utah. Oh. Um, I mean, I, I mean, 
they did. They spent the least amount of money. I mean, so I don't think it should be that surprising. Um, yeah. You know, I, I don't think it was clear that there was going only going to be one team going uh, spending five hundred thousand dollars, five hundred thousand points, or whatever they're calling it. So you know, I think that that maybe maybe they would have rethought that strategy if they had if they had realized everyone's spending the full million. But anyway, it's uh, you know they're. I think maybe they're a little bit better than the bouncers were, but it's hard to say that mm. it's hard to say that they're not the worst team. I think. Jim, what do you think? Worst team? Well, obviously Utah. So I think I think maybe a better question would be who's the second worst team. I, don't, I think if you, you surveyed a hundred <laughs> people, I think uh, Utah might get a hundred. They would get a hundred yeah. votes. Um, for for a, for one that I question would be uh, L.A. Um, uh, mm. Parento hasn't really proven anything to me for this kind of format. Thomas Wilson's a great teammate. Jade, uh, you know, succumbed a little bit to the pressure on the D.C. team last year. Hunter, I think, you know, an up and coming player. I, I, I'm not not the person I would have picked, but the real criticism I had of that team was the the money allocation. Because that's one thing about the uh, about auction that is different than Snake. It's just not who you pick. It's who you pick for how much. Right. And what they could have had is they could have had Wilson and Vivian David and one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Which would you rather have, Wilson and Vivian David and one hundred and sixty thousand, or Wilson and CP? Wait, tell that's me how you're getting that number. Uh, CP went for 440 Vivian. But, but they, they just because she they're bidding they're bidding on the spot, not on the person. So sure. I don't understand. Yeah, and I want to step they in pick, here they pick CP, CP for a second. They pick CP. I know, so but I'm saying, oh, I see what you're saying. Like they could have they yeah. wouldn't have more money though. They would be spending the same amount of money on the pick. So just because well, Vivian Jim, went for less. But I think Jim is saying they should have waited instead of picking back to back yeah. picks. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I would have just if I would have, if they if they liked Thomas Wilson, they obviously liked Thomas Wilson. If I recall right, I think yeah, he went he went right after. Um, so I th that to me tells me they kind of had a target on Wilson. If you're targeting Wilson, why wouldn't you target Vivian David? If 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 Wilson and Vivian David could play a mixed doubles match against Wilson and Catherine Parento, obviously he can't do it. But if they could, I'm taking Wilson and and Vivian David. Okay, okay, I'm gonna say, can I talk now? Okay. <laughs> EP won multiple times last year. And I think that she should have been MVP over Julian 100% for that team. He could only be as crazy as he was because of her. And her and Irina are beating Anna Lee. They're beating everyone. It's crazy to say that she hasn't proven herself in this format. Number one. Number two, her singles is so much superior than Viv's. And I think Viv is amazing at women's. It's kind of a toss up, but I still give it to Catherine. Um, so I think like the thing is, is that Catherine's not playing all the events. So I actually do think that she might've gone a little high for not playing all the events, but I think discounting her on her not performing in this format is just like, wrong. again, it's just, who could you have? They could have had and Edda Wright. They could have had Edda Wright instead of Paris. I'll take, I'll take Vivian David and Edda Wright over CP and Jade every day of the week. But I don't, I mean, they're not on the same team. No, I know, but about... Just look at the money. Just look at the money that was spent. You got to look at the money that was spent and who you could have had. Yeah, the and longer you wait, the money, the money, the money consistently went down. The longer you wait, I mean, sometimes it, it ticked up and and down. I see. I, what, I think I that, see what you're saying. I think the the only thing that I I would say is like some I've heard some people criticize some of the picks for you know they could have spent less and gotten them later, but these people did a lot of planning. They talked to a lot of players. They targeted like their first pick, and then they targeted like a whole team that made sense, made logical sense. And of course, they had multiple contingencies, but it's hard to just sit around and say, well, I'll roll the dice. I think I might be able to get them for you know 40k less than this, and it's kind of like. Yeah, but you're rolling the dice. How confident are you in your backup plan? That has to all factor in, and so I, it's hard to, it, it's hard to really kind of. I, I mean, I think I think Jim, your your points is totally fair. I don't I don't think you're wrong for pointing it out, but uh, but yeah, I think it, it's it can be a little. It, it's it's an interesting environment when when the, you know, people are bidding and you're really hoping to get a player and you keep losing bids, but they keep not picking the player you want, and then you know how yeah. you handle that. So it's tricky. Jane, any thoughts on uh, anything to add as far as like the worst team there? Did you have a, a different opinion on maybe not no. the worst team, but the second to worst team? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do not have a different opinion on the worst team. Um, the fives are a question mark for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Um, the fives are Anna Lee Waters, Zane, Mari Humberg, and Will Howells. And you can, I mean, you always want to give Anna Lee like the amount of credit she's due for what she can bring. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if Zane is really the right match for her, to be honest. Well, like they're both so high energy in MLP, which we all talk about how MLP is energy, but I 100% think you can overdo it in a mm -hmm. lot of situations. And I think sometimes Annalie goes 150% of energy and actually plays worse. So mm -hmm. I don't know. And Mari Humberg, I mean, she's good. Like I, I, I don't necessarily am against her being premier. She plays really well. She had a great run with Georgia. I've seen her at APP, but I've also seen her lose to Paris and Simone in APP. So I don't know, but her with Annalie, is interesting to me. So that's the team I have question marks for, but everyone worked really hard on drafting and uh, you know, I think they all know what they're doing. So we'll see. Well, at least we all agree that Utah is probably. I don't understand. Here. Yeah. I don't understand. Again, that, yeah, exactly. That's what you Follow get when you month. spend half of the money you could have spent. So, but um, also what sucks is they're never going to be like on championship court for us to like watch the drama go down. Yeah. Right. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> It might be. Like, well, you never know. I think part of was calling the shots on that. So he's like, what if I am like going to put this terrible match, team on center court. The first match of the first event. That's what I, I think want. A lot of people want to see that. That would actually be a smart it. decision. Yeah. So, all right. Well, while we're on the subject of the fives too, you kind of brought them up. We we kind of like uh, talked about it a little bit. Annalie Waters was taken second, um, which I think a year ago that wouldn't have been shocking. But after seeing her results in MLP, I mean, there's it's I think it'd be fair to say it could have been too early. So, um, Jane, we could start with you since you're already kind of talking about it. What do you think about ALW going second? Do you think that was the right choice um, for 680,000 points <laughs> or points, money, whatever you want to call it? Do you think that was right? I don't think there's another person that I would have said should go second besides Annalie. I think. I think she's still. Um, like do like I would not be surprised if she won right like I would never be surprised if Annalie won so I think she's still a good person to to bet on and again like these teams have you know done this up and down I don't think there's anyone else that'd be like okay you should have gone second over Anna Annalie mm -hmm. yeah I guess that, that could be fair uh Jim what do you think about that do you think that somebody uh there's anybody who's worthy of being second do you think that she was drafted for the right amount in the right spot no, no, a def definitely an overpay. And uh, I would have had her down about six. I think Riley oh. definitely goes ahead of her. Daskew definitely ahead. Um, I probably put Ignatowicz next. Um, the, dominant, oh, wow. the, the dominant man is very important in uh, MLP if you can get him. And there's a limited um, limited number of them. So she just, I'm obviously a great player. I mean, you, you always got to say this because somebody will send me some. Uh, some on Facebook. <laughs> he thinks she's not good. <laughs> no, obviously a great player, but just on a, on a value scale, uh, and I'm interested if Ben's got some stats on it, a value scale, she's just not top five. Yeah, that makes sense. Ben, I see you're shaking your head. Yes. So do you agree with that? And also let me add the question too that Jake brought up. Uh, do you think ALW is still the first woman that should be should be taken? Uh, I think it's hard to say. I kind of, kind of a, a little bit with Jane on this. I, I, I think it's hard to say that she's not the number one. She's the number one female in pickleball. Also, you're drafting for three years. Uh, I True. think she's one of these players, and there's probably it's probably sixty percent of players, but she's definitely one of these players that has this kind of hang up around rally scoring, and approaches it in a. I think Jane was right on. She she approaches it, in my opinion, way too aggressively, and she's trying to play way too hard and way too big. I also think, you know, the results in season two, two events, I think they went one and two both times. A uh, little bit small sample size. They're really close to making the playoffs and making a run. Um, they were in tough but, divisions too, I remember, at least for yeah, when she was with the Black Diamonds. I think that that they was- They had the group the, of death in Atlanta for sure. Um, so I think I think- but if, if if it's me and my team and we decide she's a great person to build a franchise around, she's she's a yeah. she's a brilliant player. She's the best female in the sport. I'm looking and saying, hey, I can help her unlock. I can help her solve the riddle of rally scoring and MLP, 
and we'll mm-hmm. figure it out over the course of three years and we're going to have a really good team eventually. But yeah, today, I, I think even if she didn't go first or, or the first team, even if she didn't, sorry, go second, I still think she's still on the board. People are still going to be bidding over 600 for her. I mean, because of those reasons that I, that I said. So, you know, it, everything's a risk at MLP, but, um, but I think, you know, they, they can, they can figure that out. And I think Zane being on our team actually could really help her figure out rally scoring. He very much feels like you, you play 0% different in rally scoring than traditional scoring. Um, and so it'd be interesting to, to see them kind of, maybe they can figure it out. Yeah. Jim, any thoughts on ALW being the number one female? Would you disagree with that at all? Maybe Anna Bright or someone, someone else maybe? No, I would. I, I mean, I might have taken Anna Bright first in uh, in, a, in an MLP, but it's just you, you see this with uh, fan, if you do a fantasy football auction, there's always a player that's 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 a very good player that's going to go high, and you just simply say, "I will let somebody else take them," and that's what I would be with Anna Lee. Is going into the draft, I would simply say, "I'll let somebody else take her." Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And just real quick, you asked about stats. Yes, her stats in season two were below below probably expectations she was number one female in mlp in season one in player impact um and she was up there pretty high even in season two even with you know the disappointing team results Mm -hmm. um so so yeah i think i think it was partly i mean my opinion from watching it is just kind of just overplaying a little bit Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, cool. Well, let's uh, move on, Jim. I'm going to start with you on this one since you actually kind of touched on this a little bit. Uh, the LA Mad Drops went back to back, ninth and tenth pick. Uh, do we think that this was a good idea? And even if so, separately, do we think the ninth and tenth as a move by itself was a good idea? And then also, do we think the picks of Catherine Parento and Thomas Wilson? Do we think that was a good idea? You already touched on that a little bit uh, before, but. Strategy, yes. I mean, from the many years that I did it in fantasy football, the, the, the best strategy, the strategy that worked the best was spend a lot on two players. And um, I think that is absolutely the right strategy in MLP because you can pick up good players late for cheap. And we saw that, I mean, throughout the draft. I could, I could, I, I'm, I'm not sure I would take Daeskew Frazier. Um, Dylan, again, um, mixed doubles, you know, obviously, again, we're talking about a top 10 player in the world, but not the best record, not necessarily the best, um, you know, the best person to have done that, that other pick with, um, I do question, I, I had thought about the, so I gave them a very high grade in terms of manipulation of the draft, but I simply questioned, is that, is that the right choice? Um, I, yeah. I would have loved to have Tardio with Dieschi, although Tardio, you get into contracts, Tardio's only got a one-year contract. So that was definitely a question about it. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, ben, thoughts on the 9-10 pick? Muted. Oh, I saw it coming. <laughs> he looked up. Sorry, that was... Drop some knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Catherine and Thomas, right? Yeah. For the drops. Um, I did write something down about this. I just didn't pull it up. Um. Here, I'll go to I'll go to Jane. Maybe you could pull it up. Yeah, go to that? Jane. We'll go to Jane. Jane, what do you think about all this? I think the nine and ten back to back was a great idea, and I am the biggest Thomas Wilson fan. Okay, but I don't. <laughs> I would not have taken him. I oh. would have done Fed or J Dub over him mm. to play with okay. Catherine and to be the alpha on the team. I, you know, you see Thomas being amazing with Viv, exactly. But they played together so much. And you don't really see him being the alpha in men's doubles. When when he, when they got the second pick after Catherine, I was like, they're they're going J Dub, they're going J Dub, and that's like money. And they went Thomas. But here's the deal: like the mat drops are taking people that they've their their strategy is clear, right? They want their old team. They love the vibe. They love the energy. You can't. I mean, like if that's what they want to do, like that's what they should do. But I think if they had picked. JW there. Catherine and JW have played a tournament together and they won. Mm -hmm. And I think that I think he's going to have a good, I think he's ready. I think dropping down this far, maybe like might get him to to, to wake up. He needs to wake up. That could help. I think him being with Georgia is amazing. That's like my favorite team. I think that's amazing. I think for the mad drops, (laughs) they would have been better off picking JW than Thomas. Yeah, that's fair. Ben, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I 
I love that Catherine and Thomas, you know, had that synergy of being on the team before the franchise knows them, knows their energy, knows their positive attitude, knows their work ethic, knows everything, all that stuff. Um, I, I just, I, I do think there are stronger options out there. I probably wouldn't have picked J-Dub in that spot, um, Jane, from myself, but everyone's different. I think the problem on the drops though is, is the Hunter Johnson pick. I think there were a lot of, a lot of better guys out there. Um, no, no offense to Hunter, but I just think uh, you know it's very competitive among, among the men. Obviously, I assume the team had some input in that. I would assume, and they they see something or they like the risk, um, the potential risk. Everything's a risk. So that's my thoughts. It does seem like he's boys with uh, with Thomas Wilson, who besties, besties. Yeah. So. I don't know. Maybe maybe they went with their number two pick, their technical number two pick, as their GM. That could be. To help yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, who knows? Maybe one day we'll find out. But anyways, speaking of uh, player, well, I guess no. Hunter Hunter was in Premier League last year. He was on the bouncers, Paris Todd and Simone. Um, but I want to shift gears now and talk about someone who's been making a big name, especially this weekend in PPA. Guh, Augie Guh uh awesome i personally think he's great i love to see that he got drafted onto a team that is definitely like my favorite team um but anyways if i'm not clearly showing my bias here uh ben i'll, I'll start with you on this one uh do we think augie G which is i always trip up on pronouncing his last name do we think that was a good pick at that spot is is he is it kind of like too early to tell how good he's gonna be i mean i don't think we've seen him in mlp right he wasn't in challenger last year so um, what do you think about Augie and how he's going to do an MLP? Uh, I definitely think he's a, he's a good pick. I'm going to go with good pick there just for Hey Shea. That's the only reason I'm doing it. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, I, I think, you know, all these picks are bets and there's been a lot of buzz around Augie. So, you know, he might, he could be all buzz and, and bust, but I, I, in my opinion, it's warranted just some of the film I've seen of him. We don't have data. We don't have stats on him. He wasn't in an MLP. Um, but yeah, he's, he's a left side beast. I think it's easier to ascend the ranks as a lefty uh, than a righty. And he's kind of having his moment. So I think I think he's a solid pick. I think he's going to get better partners quicker because he's a lefty. And so he's going to have yeah. results that, that kind of grow faster. Not that he's all of a sudden got better. Maybe he's been good for a long time. But like getting some good partnerships and getting some recognition, I think um, that could that, that's all these players sometimes need is kind of a break, I think. And I think, I think he's ready. Yeah. Jane, what do you think about Augie? Um, I think he's the perfect pick to play with Tyra. Agreed. Um, I love him. <laughs> That's it. Just all I was love. Excited. I mean, also you hear the way people talk about him and I think you can like all the, you know, they're like, he is the man. He's the man. People who play with him all the time. So he obviously oh. has like, I think you, there's a lot to be said with that. Like the people you play with thinking that you're so much better than them and like pumping him up for his personality as well. I think that it's just so strategic with Tyra. She mm -hmm. she's like the kind of player where I think she hasn't found her perfect mixed doubles partner yet and like which mm -hmm. man she jives with. And I think the two of them getting him at the end too. I, I think it's a great pick. Yeah. Jim, what do you think about Augie? Yeah, no, I agree with what uh, Ben and Jane said on, on uh, all of it. Um, Augie's a local Phoenix boy. So he's one of my guys. So oh, nice. uh, I, I was big on him. And I think we saw this weekend, uh, when he and JMV took down Ignatowicz and Wright, um, Augie's, Augie's right there. He's playing with Ignatowicz and Wright. He's right there. He belongs on the court with them. He's not out of place. Um, he's got some, some great drives, great resets. Uh, love his defense off of his backhand. And absolutely, I think Jane said it 110% correct, Tyra has got to play with a lefty. So great fit mm -hmm. there. Yeah. All right, cool. We're all in agreement, Augie. He's the man, and we're looking forward to watching him. Uh, let's stay on the uh, the idea of talking about specific picks here. Now, let's talk about Tina Pisnik. Uh, do we think she was taken too early? Um, gosh, I forget. What's the guy's name at the kitchen? I saw him tweeting to Maddie Pickles about Jared. this. Jared, yeah. Jared uh, or Jason? It? It's Jason. Jason, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's, Jason. Playing. She's playing very well this weekend. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so jane we we could start with you then do you think she was taken too early do you think no. she was taking the perfect spot too expensive maybe no i i think she's so solid i especially after this weekend hold on i want to 
I'm as smart as y'all. Give me one second. She was taking like, the thirtieth pick. James for worth the wait. Thirty-eight thousand is worth the wait. No, uh, I mean honestly, I think that she's a great pick. For, I think she's great next to Etta. I think she's yeah. super consistent and solid. I think she can also be great with Christian. Um, because again, she's so solid. She's playing so well with Deckel. Mm -hmm. I think she's a great female pick. Cool. All right, Jim. What and do you I, think? Yeah, Ed is great. That's a good team. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I agree. I agree with everything Jane just said. Pisnik's been very solid. I think she's been solid from the, the first time I saw her. The only thing that was holding Tina back was partners. Um, you know, it's so hard when you start out in PPA. You get you get bad seeds. We saw that with Stax Root and Teas is one of my favorite ones to point to. They just got lousy seeds for the longest time, and so they couldn't accumulate points. They couldn't get a higher seed, and, and finally they had to break through. And then once they broke through, boom, now they're making semis and, and quarters all the time. And so Tina is one of those just needed to get better partners and uh, uh, and break through. Very very solid player. The only thing on on the price was right after her we saw a, a, a dip down in prices. Um, so I mean you could come up if you want to be picky you could come up with something saying we might have been able to uh, uh, save a little money, spend it a little elsewhere. But looking at their team, I'm not sure where where you would have spent it. So so I don't have any criticism on that one. Ben, what do you think about Tina? Take it too early. Also, considering the fact that, you know, this is a three-year kind of situation. Wise choice not criticizing our picks, Jim. Wise choice. Um, <laughs> uh, so I think, you know, of course, there's always there's always a chance um, that you get any player, you could get any player for cheaper, you know. But like I said earlier, once you identify the best for your fit for your team and player preferences, I think you can't sit around and play with fire. You got to go go for the go for the jugular and be willing to spend some money. Um, and I think Tina's trajectory is steeply up and to the right. She's a solid upside pick both this year uh, and I think for next year too, because I think they can retain her for two years if they choose. Mm -hmm. um, I don't I don't know the tr contract details of everybody, but um, she, she doesn't make errors. She's a perfect partner for Etta and Christian that can set them up and defend herself also effectively. She I think she was number one in resets in uh, Challenger mm -hmm. level season two. Um, which is not necessarily a great stat, but it shows that she can she can diffuse attacks and keep the rally going, and that's really kind of the job of right side player. And she's going to be doing that all MLP and gender and in mixed. I mean, I think I just think her trajectory. She still has she's still getting better. Um, and two years, she's not going to she's only going to be two years older in two years. So it's not like there's any <laughs> issues in my opinion. I think it's a great pick, and. Um, I would say that even if, if if I wasn't a part of the a part of the the team, but the GM was uh, the Widgeon. He's the man, and he did a, he did a great job. He worked his ass off. Very cool. All right, I love that. We're getting stats here. See, this is why we got him here. Number one in resets. Who would I didn't know that? So that's interesting. Uh, all right, cool. Well, uh, how about this, Kate uh, Fahey? Fahey? It's Fahey. Uh, Jim, you know a little bit about her. So tell me about Kate. Uh, do you think that? she's middle of the pack she's gonna explode and jump off the scene or maybe a little bit overrated what do you think well um again we we studied her she was put into the draft kind of at the last minute and uh you know you had to run out and find some film on her and uh, liked what i saw um tennis player not a lot of not a lot of power uh would be my one question on her so again i question the fit a little bit with anna i think anna's playing that you know strong power game with Rohrbacher and it's working a lot um, the, the whole question is, will she, will she, or won't she improve and how much will she improve and, and how soon will she improve? Um, I'm big on an MLP, despite the fact that it's this three year thing, I'm trying to win 2024. I don't even know if MLP is going to be around in 2025. I'm trying to win 2024. <laughs> fair. Yeah. And fair. Get I'm going to let, I'm going to let 2025 worry about 2025. So I'm happy with a player like Pisnik, even that might be a little older. So I'm not, I'm not a huge fan on the Will Howells pick or the Fahey pick, uh, Klinger, um, those those potential picks that were kind of in the fourth round. To me, there were some there were some better picks uh, than than a couple of those. Um, uh, but uh, I mean, we'll see on Fahey. She has game. She has game. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Jane, I'll zigzag over to you. Uh, any thoughts on Fahey? Uh, do you do you know her game at all, or any any thoughts on maybe the fact that? Anna Bright has a good track record, you know, with these random, I don't know if she was responsible for picking her, but you know, maybe that's just kind of the lore that we're all going to grant to her. 
I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't have anything educated to say on her. I don't know anything about her game or anything like that. I trust Anna because I didn't trust Anna last year and I was wrong. So <laughs> I do trust her. Yeah. I mean. You admit your mistakes. Fair enough. Exactly. <laughs> okay. There are other uh, women I wouldn't have taken. Let's say that. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Ben, what do you think about her? And do you know anything about her or? I don't, I don't know anything about her. So similar to, to Jane, I'm just like, I just think it's so interesting that it's the, it's Anna Bright's team that's yeah. kind of taking a flyer on a, on a woman. And I think it'll just be a fun story, interesting thing to see out, to, to check out. I mean, there's no guarantees that Rachel, I mean, I don't think even Anna knew for, she couldn't have guaranteed Rachel would have turned out as amazing as she did. Um, so there's always a risk. And I think that I, it doesn't surprise me that Anna Bright, or even actually the shock, the the chafeses would would want to swing for the fences. I don't think they're looking to, you know, be make make playoffs occasionally. I think they really want to want to win the whole thing. And, you know, you got Anna Bright saying she she sees you know ability in this up and comer player. Um, I think you jump on that. So, fair enough. All right, cool. Well, now I want to start swinging in, dipping our toes a little bit in the water of the challenger level. Before we specifically talk about the challenger level, I do want to ask you guys, who do you think should have been in the premier level that was in challenger? Is there anybody that you saw that's like, ah, they deserved a premier spot. But if you're going to say that, then you got to also tell me who is the person that you would demote to the challenger level. Um, so Ben, we can start with you. Yep. Uh, what, what do you think about this one? Yeah, well, uh, I don't know. Some people may have know may know this, but um, number two in player impacts for premier level 2023, Travis Redmire. So oh. it's kind of, to me, it's a shock. He didn't make it even with the fact that upside is a huge focus for three years. You're drafting your player for three years, but with your fourth pick, you're drafting your player for the next seven, eight months. And, um, you know, Travis has proven himself in, uh, in premier level. Um, and statistically he's there, uh, you know, he, I'm not saying he's a top two player. It, it's just, he, sure. he's very consistent, doesn't make errors. And so he has a really good player impact. His volume of player impact is less than say a Ben or Riley. In other words, he doesn't take up as much space. Those players will control about 30% of the rally ends where, Travis will control closer to like 22, 23% of rally ends, which is below average, you know, for a single player on the court. So um, he doesn't really take over the game in the same way, but he's very consistent and it could be, a, I think, a really strong right side player. He's already said he wants to be that. And I think who you, who you, who you take out, I think would be CJ Klinger. I love CJ Klinger. He has incredible hands, statistically excellent data from challenger. I just think, there's also a cognitive bias of teams that really perform well, players that are winning MVPs like he did twice, um, where they kind of they they end up actually be appearing more valuable maybe than they are. That you know that that was really a team that achieved those things. It wasn't just CJ by himself. Um, and so I'd love to see him succeed, but I just think if we're just looking to the end of 24, which is what you're looking at with a with a fourth round pick, I think that that Travis um, would have been. That's more to pick. Can mm, I ask you a question, Ben? Based yeah. on all these stats, would you take Travis over Jay? Oh, Jay does seem to be trending downward, just for my own eyeballs. I, I would. I think it, I would take Travis over Jay if I felt like I had an aggressive female that I could put, pair him with and mix, like Georgia Johnson, for example. Mm -hmm. If you have maybe a female that's more steady and not making errors i think i would want jay you know flying across the court and hitting crazy earnings and stuff like that mm, interesting so jane what do you think do you think uh travis should bump up do you have anybody else in mind that you felt like should have been bumped up i gotta say i'm disappointed to hear that cj Klinger should go down he's my boy i love him and also i felt like for the value of two thousand i feel like that's good value you know but hey i kind of like him i think well the team that he's on, I like him for. And here's why. Like, it's chaos on that team. Like, just, like, lean into it. Like, I don't know what's going to happen yeah. between Jack Sock and CJ Klinger. But <laughs> yeah. I don't necessarily think – the way Jack Sock's playing a little crazy right now, I don't necessarily think anyone – I don't know. I'm kind of, like, into it. Like, let's see what happens. Yeah. I, yeah. Might be, oh, so you're saying it's, like, a risk worth taking. for Yeah, CJ for that team. For that team. I'm like yeah. – 
just with Leia, like do it, just go, whatever. But I also mm -hmm. kind of just like it when like crazy teams come together. So bias. Okay. Um, I'm not like hot on the Alex Strong pick. I gotta be oh. honest. Yeah. I don't, it's confusing to me. Um, who do you think should replace her? I mean, the problem is, is the team she's on. I don't know. I'm trying to think who could be on that team. And it's just such a mess. I don't know who would even. Ava Ratkowska, maybe. That's hard pick? for me. I pick Irina over Alex in general. Oh. I don't know where okay. Irina's been, but I think, I think. I would. I haven't given up on her yet. I don't know what's going on with her though. So I'm sure you guys all have insight that I don't have why she it's hasn't goat, been playing. Though. I haven't seen her. Mm -hmm. But just purely from this question, I picked Irina over Alex, and I think I picked Lena over Alex as well. Okay. But again, yeah. with that team, I don't know. I don't know what that yeah. team should have done at their last. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Jim, what do you think? Anybody that you felt like uh, kind of got snubbed at a premiere? Um, well, I, I'd go with I'd go with uh, t two. I'd agree with Jane about Alex. We had Alex rated as a second round uh, challenger pick. Um, I think there were a lot better options there, but I think Jane's right. At that point, uh, Utah could just throw up a surrender flag and be done with it. Um, the mm -hmm. the guy that I think that got missed on is Jack Monroe. Jack Monroe mm -hmm. is he's two things. We've we've talked we've talked some about ability trying to win two thousand twenty four. We're also talking about potential down the road. Jack Monroe is both. Jack Monroe is a top 20 player, if not a top 15 player this year. At Desert Ridge, Jack played with Julian Arnold against Deckel and Tyson. Jack Monroe was the best player on the court. Wow. And, uh, you know, it was close. It was a really competitive battle. I, th I think uh, Julian and, and Jack won like 11-7, 11-8, something like that. Jack Monroe was the best player on the court. Um, and that that's who he is. He got creamed in the pre-draft process by this idea that he's not interested in pickleball he's much more interested in being a social media guy and um Just he, good I, I i talked to him some i i think there i i honestly think there is somewhat of an ad i think it went a little too far on him but i think there's a, a grain of truth in what was said about him but i think he's got such upside and such current talent to not uh, pick him I'm basically picking him over everybody picked in the fourth round, except uh, maybe Augie would be the only one. But I'm picking him ahead of everybody else. He he could have been he could have been a very legitimate third round pick, and it wouldn't have made me blink at all. Anybody else have any thoughts on that on Jack Monroe or anything? Well, I'll else just add really quick from from watching him in the quarters with Julian. I thought he played really well, and it felt like there were like five to ten times where he sped up cross court and Julian had a ball high at his shoulders and hit it into the net or just wasn't ready for like how fast Jack was hitting and how fast it came back to him. I think if Jack gets a partner that gets used to hit the timing, I'm not saying, you know, it's a problem with Julian, but like if they played together more, he might've been ready for that and they may have had a really much better run. So I, I do see a lot of talent in Jack and I am very disappointed that he did not get drafted in premier as well. Mm, fair enough. All right. Well, good insight there. All right. Well, uh, I want to go around and, and we'll just briefly touch on the challenger league. Anybody have any, I, I'm going to go around. I want to ask what your top challenger team is and bottom challenger teams. I want you to kind of give me both ends. Who do you think did the best? Who do you think did the worst? Uh, Jim, we can start with you on this one. What top challenger team and bottom <laughs> challenger team. Well, I'll, I, since I helped Vegas with the draft, I got to skip, I got to skip Vegas. I mean, obviously we <laughs> liked our, we liked our team. When I did fantasy football, people are always like, well, how did you, how did you like your team? Of course I liked it. I mean, I picked the players because I like the players. So obviously I'm going to like the team, but other teams, um, you know, we were really looking at that combo that, um, uh, uh, that SoCal got of Eric Lang and, uh, purple Jesus, Max Mantow. Purple Jesus, um, yeah. I, I like that, but I don't like, I don't like their women at all. Um, so there's a lot of teams again that, uh, I like certain things about them, but there were other things that uh, um, that I, that I questioned. Uh, Brooklyn, um, you know, went after De La Rosa and Emmerich. They play together. I think that was smart. I like Lena in uh, in Challenger. Sleeth was an interesting pick. We had her on our list. Another sort of uh, Kate Fahey light, if you will. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm not sure that. I mean, Sleeth is not on the level of Fahey yet. Um, and I don't think it has the same potential. 
Um, so, you know, I, I, again, I think it's a lot of teams that were, were interesting, uh, you know, a pick I like and a pick I don't like that kind of drags them down. Yeah. Uh, Jane, we can go over to you on this next. Uh, what do you think? Any standout top teams that you see any standout bottom teams that you see on there? I like the SoCal heart eights. But yeah, I'm biased. Gonna say, Christine's Jim my was girl. saying he doesn't like that that goat pick of Irina. Yeah, but you do. Yeah. And like you just wait for what Christine's gonna do. Okay. I have faith in her. Oh, pickle pop over there, right? Yeah. So you, you see her up close and personal. I've seen her when I was in Santa Monica too. I saw saw her play a lot and I was like, wow, she's really good. And then all of a sudden she's just climbing up the ladder. She trains hard. She hangs out with me. I don't know what else you yeah. need. <laughs> Um, what else? I also, um, I like the smash Pat Smith. He's up and down, but he's had some good results with Jay. I think I like the smash. I like the women on that team. That could be good. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, a I'm so off. biased. I don't know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're the allowed worst to team. Biased. I will tell you who I think the worst team is. Um, Bay Area. Oh, okay. Vivian Glossman, Colin Schick, Rachel Retker, and Kauka, Patrick Kauka. None of them are like, yeah. Rachel Retker was an interesting choice to me. Mm, um, yeah. None of this team just doesn't like. Vivian Glossman's shown sometimes that she could hang, but like she seems like if she's going to be the best player on the team, like. Well, something to you know, say about Vivian Glossman, too. Back to Alex Strong really fast. When the <laughs> two of them play as partners, mm -hmm. Vivian is the high, much better player. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah. Not to sort of she kills that. it in the APP, yeah. But I think she's, she's a little bit under the radar, radar, radar. If her and Rachel can get it done. Cool. Okay. Ben, what do you think about all this? Yeah, I think there's a lot of teams, kind of like Jim was saying, where it feels like, Oh, I really love those two players together, but then the other two or even three players are really loved, but then it, it feels like I don't know why they picked the other player. Um, I think at, at the top, I I do really like uh, Atlanta. Um, Jao May, Jeannie Arquina. I, yeah, Taco, I'll just talk about Atlanta. I do like SoCal too, but you already, already took that one. So I'll take Atlanta. <laughs> I, Jeannie and Todd both have excellent stats in, in the data. Um, oh. Jeannie is so long on the court and she looks like a pretzel most of the time. It doesn't like look pretty, <laughs> but she freaking balls and she gets, uh, she's really good in hands battles and she has this nasty third shot drop and cross court roll. Um, I really, I really think that's a, that's going to be a strong team. Todd Fote, you know, CJ won MVP twice. Todd won in the in the in the finals in San Clemente. In the finals in San Clemente, he played two two games and mixed in a men's, and he had twelve speed ups. He lost zero of those twelve speed ups. He won eleven of them, and one of them was reset. That is like a single day performance that almost never happens to have that incredible the success rate. A really good success rate is like fifty five percent or sixty percent um, mm. win, uh, and he was he was way above that. So it was an incredible performance by him, and he just had some good results this weekend. I think he would have not fallen to the third round if 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 the draft had happened this coming week. So I think it's a really smart pick. Um, I don't know much about Angie. I, I hope that she can step up and really and really fill in fill round out that team. Todd um, and, and Maggie. Then, did Todd I think Todd and Maggie won today, did they? Or did they lose? I know it was tight. I don't I remember. I think they won today against Leia and Hayden. All right. They're like, he's good. He's really good. I'm like certainly he's I'm motivated. Great, you know? He he's like you talk to him about his game and he's like He's like so serious about it. And he was one of the players in season one, each event, his player impact improved. He was one of the seven players in challenger that improved each event, his player impact. Yeah. And Todd, Todd and I still doing had it. huge wins. They they're going the semis. That's crazy. He's so yeah. He's a quiet, but super competitive guy. And I, I do really love him. Um, nice. At the bottom. I, I mean, I like Las Vegas. I just I just don't know much about Mo. And so I if Jim, you think he's uh -oh. gonna be a good a good guy, I don't know much about him, but I love Scarpa as a fourth round pick. That's a great team. Um I I I don't know if I have a, a clear I think I think Bay Area. I might have to say Bay Area, but I think 
the black the black bears california could be like the wild card they could be like really great rafa and dj are not going to win many not going to lose many men's but i worry about the strength of their women and i worry about them in mix how vulnerable they're going to be can rafa and dj really really protect their their women i mean i'm not sure emily gets to stay on the left side the whole time i love that but um anyway i think they're kind of a wild card to me they could be make a big run or they could be really they could really not do well i thought dj was going to tear it up last season in challenger and he didn't and yeah amanda hendry's interesting to me as well so well it's it's already tore it up but not not dj so as much yeah well, it is going to be an exciting year. I'm super excited to get into it. I have one last thing I'm going to put to you guys. We're, we don't need to talk about it much. I just want a yes or a no from you guys. Just a yes or a no. I'm going to pull this up on the screen. Okay, you guys ready for this? You're going to know exactly what I'm talking about when I pull it up. What do we think? Do we agree with this? Christian Alshon's tweet that went viral. Pickleball has made me much better athlete than tennis ever did. Faster reaction time and speed are needed since the ball is only coming from 10 feet away. Point for point. Pickleball requires more skill than tennis. And then, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, what do we think? Is he right? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, we got a yes from Ben, a yes from Jane. Jim, what do you think? Yes or no? Is he right? Uh, boy, that's a tough one. It's the uh, easiest question. No, I don't know. It, it, it isn't. Um, it's a yes or a no, Jim. <laughs> It's an it's an abstain. I'm a tennis player for so <laughs> Oh, that's the lawyer I, speak. Tennis, that's tennis, a, that sounds like something a tennis player would say. Tennis, <laughs> is a, tennis is a much more difficult sport to be good at, but tennis is so friggin' boring today. Tennis is just ruined by the equipment. We had the discussion oh. about pickleball equipment. Tennis has been absolutely ruined by the equipment. They need to go back to, to wooden rackets and and uh, serve and you know have different styles. Now it's just hit the ball as hard as you can from the baseline back and forth. It's an incredibly boring sport to me. So, um, but so yeah, I think I Christian think. is right and wrong at the same time. <laughs> Fair enough. I think maybe it requires pickleball requires more skills, more different types of skills. Yes. Um, but pickleball is but tennis may be harder in a, in a different sense. Yes. But I mean. I, I feel like the real headline here is that all these top tennis pros know who Alshon is and they're talking <laughs> yeah. to him. And so I think that's a great yeah. news for pickleball. You know, he loves that too. Yeah. Well, if, if pickleball is so easy, I, I, I tweeted to James Blake. I said, if pickleball is so easy, I got two words for you. Sam Query. <laughs> Fair enough. Yep, exactly. There you go. All right. Well, before we head out of here, I do want to do one thing with you guys. Now, I don't know if you've watched my show before, but in case you haven't, we all three of us are going to play a little fun. All three of us. There's four of us. The three of you are going to play a fun little game. Uh, we're going to play some partner body bag winner off the net. Partner body bag winner off the net. Partner body bag winner off the net. Larry Jansen winner off the net. Tyson McGuffin winner off the net. Haley Waters body bag body bag. James Lee got a wish body bag body bag. Sorry not sorry winner off the net. Sorry not sorry partner. All right, partner, body bag, winner off the net. The game where I am going to give you guys three people in the pickleball world, and you got to decide who you are going to partner with, who you are going to body bag, and who you're going to hit a winner off the net with. Sorry, not sorry style. It's like marry, kiss, kill that you might have played as a kid, except pickleball style. So let's do it. The three people are obviously going to be the other three people that are not you. (laughs) <laughs> so uh oh, look yes. around. yeah we're gonna play with all, all of us here uh so <laughs> let, let's do this <laughs> jane's like i don't want to tell jim i'm gonna body bag him. Uh, <laughs> let's do we'll do ben first uh ben partner body bag winner off the net who are you gonna partner with who are you gonna body bag who are you gonna hit a winner off the net out of me jim and jane uh jane you play the left jane me jim yeah jane yeah, I can play you, both. Do you play, you play of course you can. Well, I'm partnering with Jane because I want her to play the left. Uh, I like my backhand. Uh, winner off the net goes to you, Jim. Uh, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. And Chris, I'm I'm I'm, I'm body bagging you. I'm, I'm <laughs> How not dare even, you? Not even trying to keep it in the court. It's uh, maybe even a nasty Nelson. Oh, oh, geez. Okay, fair enough. I'll be on the lookout for that. Uh, Jim, we'll go to you next. Partner, body bag, winner off the net. Who are you picking out of me, Jane, and Ben? Well, I, I, 
I'd probably partner with Ben because I am uh, very um, aligned with him on the importance of analytics and stats and that approach. So I, I really appreciate, um, on a semi-serious note, I really appreciate what he's doing in the sport. I think it's really important. You know, I dabbled in it, but didn't have the time to do it to the extent he's doing. So I think he'd partner him because he's doing something I think is hugely important. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to hit it. Y'all aren't doing anything important. Apparently get on that. <laughs> I'm a, I'm hit. I'm a, Chris, I'm, I'm hitting you with the ball and, and Jane, you're, you're getting it off the net. Fair enough. All right, Jane, your turn. What do we think? Are you going to uh, body bag anybody else or am I going to get body bagged three times? All here? right. What do we think? I'm going to partner with Ben cause he wants to partner with me. <laughs> I'm going to body bag Jim because he likes, oh! tennis. he likes tennis too much. <laughs> and uh we talked about smack about irena <laughs> i'll do winner off the net too chris oh all right fair enough well I, f I could sleep a little bit better tonight knowing i didn't get body bag three times but it would have been okay even if if you did well guys this was a blast this was so much fun thank you so much for hanging out hopefully everybody watching that you guys all enjoyed it if you guys have not yet go ahead and hit that like button make sure you're subscribed to the channel make sure you go check out all these people's content here go check out jane on instagram go check out ben on social media too Real Clear Stats is the is his company that he's doing. Jim is all over Facebook. I'm sure you guys all know about his stuff. Everybody does. Uh, this was a ton of fun. Thanks, everybody, uh, for hanging out and watching. We will see you back coming on Tuesday. We're going to drop an episode for the PPA this weekend. It's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, so thanks, everybody. We will see you around. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Great job, everybody. Bye-bye. Yep.